As a professional photographer, I've had the opportunity to shoot all over Australia and internationally for a wide range of clients. I also make prints for sale and for exhibitions, and I need to ensure that I'm using a paper that shows off my images as well as possible. One of the huge advantages of inkjet printing compared to photographic printing is the vast array of papers that we can use. It's possible to reproduce watercolour paintings on the exact same paper types that the original paintings were made on. And if you like the super glossy look of what we used to call cibachrome prints, well, that's doable too. I think it's fair to say that prints have never looked so good and the learning curve to high-end printing has never been so easily climbed. So let's have a look at the different types of papers you can use. Broadly speaking, there are two main types of papers, gloss and matte. Gloss includes the semi-gloss papers since they both have similar coatings able to hold a great deal of ink and so look very rich if you want them to. Matte paper, which includes canvas, are a matte finish and many have a certain amount of texture in their surfaces. In general, they can hold less volume of ink before the dots start to bleed together, but they look just like the sorts of papers artists used to paint on. Printers' outputs are also optimised for different paper types by choosing the exact paper types in the printer software, and each paper has its own particular characteristics defined by a paper profile, which slightly adjusts the printer's output based on subtle differences in colour between paper types. Glossy and semi-gloss prints look like photographs are used to. Rich colours, robust surface and a shine of varying degrees. And if you remember the days of photo lab prints, then the lustre paper is a lot like that, although the current prints are actually quite superior in terms of contrast, colour, range and longevity. Matte prints have more of a traditional fine art feel. Some have a texture or tooth and are in many cases made by paper mills dating back to the 16th century. They can also be quite heavy and feel great in your hands. This is known as heft. They appear very analogue and less computery, and in a digital world, some fine art photographers are using this characteristic as a sales tool, even going so far as deckling the edges, which is tearing it, and framing the print with the ragged edges showing. Let's look at some specific paper types. Pro Platinum is Canon's own premium high gloss paper, which can take heavy ink loads and thus give really good contrast. This paper works really well because the Pro 1 and Pro 10 use a dedicated photo black ink which is designed for glossy papers. Being a die printer, the Pro 100 does not have a special photo black and whilst it's a little bit less contrasty on this paper, the colours are slightly more vibrant. Lustre and semi-gloss papers are very similar to each other, although my own testing shows the newer lustre to be slightly superior in terms of contrast and colour range. Both make wonderful paper for almost any kind of image, and if you printed on nothing else, you'd still be perfectly happy. Museum etching is a heavy art paper made by the famous Hannah Muller paper mill. It has a lovely texture, and at 350 GSM, it's almost double the heft of most papers, and could be more accurately called a thin card rather than a thick paper. Fine art papers call for a different approach than just hitting P for print. It's critical to remember that the maximum density of black that you can get on fine art papers is significantly less than that of a glossy type paper. What this means for photographers is that low-key, dark-toned images are difficult to print well on matte papers. In other words, images which have large areas of very dark tones like night scenes or gloomy rainforests can look muddy, particularly when compared to the same image on a semi-gloss paper. Average tone scenes look fine on matte papers, just don't expect a particularly punchy result, although the dye inks of the Pro 100 can give slightly better contrast on the textured matte papers than the pigment Lucia ink set. So if you need as much punch as possible on matte papers, the Pro 100 might be a good choice of printer. Where the fine art matte papers come into their own is at the other end of the tonal range, with high key images, snow scenes, portraits, anything that does not rely on deep blacks for its full effect. Paper choice is affected by the image. Really high key images probably look their absolute best on fine art papers. Medium and low key images will look best on glossy papers, but that's a very general rule of thumb. This is a good time to mention that you are in no way limited to Canon papers. There's a whole world out there of interesting paper types from manufacturers such as Canson, Ilford, Moab, Hannah Muller, Museo, to name but a few. And there are also metallic papers and canvases which can provide interesting finishes and textures for your images. 
Profiles for these papers can easily be downloaded in one neat package from the Canon website. Just head to the Download a Driver section, choose your product and select the ICC profiles for art paper printing. The important thing to remember is that the paper choice is part of the creative process and the right image on the right paper will look just sensational.